Hello everyone, my name is George Castro and this is going to be a short tutorial video on how to ask questions on Ask Ubuntu. Ask Ubuntu is a stack exchange site, um, and which means that it's a little bit different from what people expect from forums or mailing lists to work, as in it's not very linear, it's more uh, wiki based with editing. So I'm going to go through some examples on how this works. If you're having problems trying to figure out uh, how the site works and getting confused, um, then hopefully this will help you. So. You go to askubuntu.com and you see people asking questions and you decide, oh, this looks pretty neat. I'm going to ask my own question. So you click on ask a question up here. And then what you fill in here will determine the quality of the answers that you're going to get. We'd like to see as much detail as possible. Now, I've asked some questions here in the past. So I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to do, uh, you know, kind of like a live demonstration on how I ask questions. So... I just bought a boxy remote for my XBMC computer, my media center, and I wanted it to get into work in Ubuntu, and it didn't work when I plugged it in. So, I want to ask a question. I would say, how, let's see, boxy remote not working in Ubuntu 10.10. Now, as you can see, the site starts to uh, do duplicate detection based on what you type in here, and then you will say something like, how to get it working. And then normally at this point you would hit submit and then wonder, wait, no one's really like helping me. Or someone might leave comments, but um, it's not really getting you what you need to uh, do to get the boxy remote working. And then within a few hours, this question scrolls off the front page, and then you're basically doomed at that point. So people always wonder, well, you know, how, how is this better than, than something else? So the first thing we're going to do here is um, we're going to improve this question a little bit. Um, the really great thing about the system is as you improve your question, you can just edit the question directly. When you do that, it bumps the question to the top of the site, and it gets it more visibility. The more information you put in your question, since we have all the users looking at the front page, the more information they'll be able to help you. So the first thing we, we can do here is we can remove Ubuntu because we're on Ask Ubuntu, so I know I'm running Ubuntu, and the version. We have tags here, so we can say this is going to be, what, 1010. We know we're trying to get it working on Boxy, and it's hardware-related, so maybe let's tag driver on it. The site automatically um, fills in the tags for you, and if you tag it wrong, someone will just fix it for you. It's not a big deal. So let me, um, let me, let me kind of phrase it how I would type it into Google. How do I get my Boxy remote working? Now here, I can add some details, right? I have a FUBAR 5000 desktop PC that I want to use. I bought a USB boxy controller. Okay? And then you will hit submit. Now, while you ask your question and while people are digging it, usually what I like to do is I'm, I'm trying to troubleshoot my problem. So I'll go and I'll search on the web, I'll search on forums, I'll search on different things like that. But as I'm getting new information on my question, I'm going to come back in, so I'll post the question now, but maybe later I'll come back in an hour after I've done some research. I've tried the following things. Plugging it in. Make the log say blah, 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 and then you would paste that in. I tried this solution that I found here, and then link to whatever forum or whatever you found. Finally, let's say I tried rebooting. Now I've edited my question, and I'll and um, I'll go back and do it. So uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and transition to my existing boxy question because. Uh, this example is done. So, here's where my question is. Luckily for me, I was able to do the research all at once. So in this case, I just updated my answer. So what I did is, when I started this answer, it was very, very small. And I just kept adding to it as I found stuff. And this is what we want you to do to your questions as well. So I'm going to give you some examples of where some, some people have done this. This guy here, um, his theme was crashing, so he had this, like, Windows 95 Battleship Gray thing going on. And initially, he was like, well, 
you know, this is what it looks like, I don't have a problem. And then people would ask him, how did you install it? And then he would answer right away, well, I completed a fresh install. This is the first and biggest mistake people make in a Stack Exchange site. Someone asks you a question, and then you just reply to it. And then someone else asks, and then you end up with this, which is a nice, long, big stream of comments. Now, people here get frustrated because these are kind of smaller texts, and they're compressed, and formatting doesn't really work right, as you can see here. So then people get frustrated, and they don't realize how the site works. The way this works is when people ask you questions, you're going to go back to your original question and edit it and add the detail there. This does a few things. First of all, it gets stuff out of the comments because comments are basically for saying, hey, you forgot to do this, or hey, you, can, have you tried this? You should maybe try adding this or disabling that. And as, as people give you little tips like that, you will go and you will fix your original question to have more detail. Now. As you're editing your question, people will also try to answer it. As you add more detail, these answers might get out of date. And the people who made these answers will just go back and update them. So as you can see, if we get the information out of this, out of, out of the comments and into your question, it puts the um, information up front. The real bonus here is that when the next person comes to help you answer your question, they don't have to dig through threads or go on page, you know, four or five of a forum as you're, you know, uh, giving people more information. The idea is to make your question as good as possible right up front. After this person started editing, um, it started to become more, uh, more and more obvious that this, we had seen, seen this before. So someone ended up marking it a duplicate. And then this is the actual solution here. As you can see, this person also went back and added information to their question. So now you're thinking, well, this person back here did a bunch of work, and that's kind of a waste. Not really. The more duplicates we have, those are more pages pointing to the actual solution in places like Google and the site. So it, it does really help um, to add as much detail as you can here. Here's another person um, where people started asking her for feedback. Uh, and she wasn't putting it in the question. In this case, the mods kind of helped her out and started editing the question and put the information um, back in here. So that's basically how you get questions um, answered. We want you to edit, edit, edit as much as possible. You can never really over-edit. If, if you feel like you've gotten to the point where you don't have any new information and you can edit, then you can do things like add a bounty where you can uh, take your existing reputation and give uh, an extra bonus to the people who helped you answer. When you do do a bounty, it's kind of all hands on deck at that point. You know, you should be uh, searching on Google, uh, searching through forums, and every little tidbit that you can find here um, will be really useful for something. Uh, just to give you a, a, an idea of what I did here, I found this information for this answer in this post in the XBMC forum, but it was buried. This was on like uh, you know, page 22 or something ridiculous like that. So, but I was able to find the exact information that I needed just to get the Boxy remote working. And I added that here, and I, I of course, linked back to the XBMC forum, so if people want more detail, they can go dig on that. Right? And I also found the bug report um, of people having the same problem getting the Boxy remote working. So what I did is I put all that together, and as my answer got better and better, I kept improving it and improving it. So... Do that with your answers, and also do that with your questions. And over time, the quality of the site goes up. So I hope uh, you learned something with this. So go forth and ask questions, and hope you have a good time. Thanks.